what's up guys so I wanted to go over a little bit of our system I say a little bit because each one of these things can really kind of start <laughs> have its own rabbit hole but you know we get asked a lot like how do we do things and, and how do we run our group training and you know I'm gonna touch at the end I'll, I'll just mention it right now but then I'll touch at the end and I have in a previous video life TV episode of the three different levels that we have we have team training which is our large group training and when we have small group personal training that's our performance kind of package uh, which is groups of somewhere from 6 to 12 per coach. If we have more, we have multiple coaches. And then there's semi-private personal training. So small group personal training has strength training included. And we'll touch on that a little bit at the end. And then we have semi-private personal training, which is completely individualized and includes nutrition coaching. But this is the bigger picture kind of like thought process behind, you know, how we do our coaching. Like some of the X's and O's, some of the science, uh, some of the frameworks and the format. And so... First of all, nothing happens. Remember, like when somebody, whether it's you, whether it's me, whether it's a, a client, when they come in, everybody has a goal. They have an outcome, a result that they want to achieve. It's not about the stuff, right? The stuff is the vehicle that gets us there. When I say the stuff, it means the mobility, the conditioning, the strength training, like the activation drills. You know, all of those things are like kind of like those steps in the bridge to get us to our goal, to our outcome. So everything starts with goal. Like, what do they want? You know, and like we could dive deep into that part because honestly it's so important and most coaches don't do a good enough job about finding out what the gravity to the client's goals, what's the anchor, what's really making them want to make that change and, and come and train, you know, seek you out to help them out, to coach, guide, support them along the way. And so there's a couple of things that we do. One is Super 7 readiness questions and like, like I said, I don't have to time even in this episode to go deep into it but there we find out you know how what type of coaching they're looking for like what if what would be a success to them not only from a result standpoint but a coach standpoint essentially finding out what um you know what they're looking for you to help them with and, and a lot of times that will clarify like just asking those questions will clarify it for them number two is the client intake form and that goes everything from training nutrition lifestyle to find out everything from the food they like to the to what they're doing currently, to what they're looking to achieve, the feelings, the as specific outcomes, uh, to their family members that they live with. Like, there's a lot in there. It's actually 37 questions. That gives us a really good insight. Before we go into anything else, right? So I just want to kind of like pre-frame that. There's a whole kind of world here that we could really dig into, but I wanted to show you the format of some of our training philosophies uh, based on the thing that I talked about last time. So. From there, there's going to be some type of assessment, okay? Now, we're going to talk about the training assessment first. And if somebody signs up for our trial, we're going to go into, they're going to get semi-private personal training uh, at least one time a week, even in our trial, so that we show them, you know, kind of what we do. And so, you know, they'll go to a strategy ses a se a session with an assessment. And let's talk about the assessment first. There's a couple things that can happen. If it, like I said, if it's an individual thing, we're gonna do two things. We're gonna do a passive assessment on just like how they move. So we've got shoulder rotation, right? Internal, external rotation, specific way we do it. A sideline windmill to find out do they have good thoracic extension and rotation, right? So we just wanna see where they're at. You have to assess something to discover what we need to work on, like what movement we need to improve, like what capabilities we need to add. Then we have hip rotation. I'm doing it standing right now, but internal, external rotation, right? We're gonna find out passively where they can get to, right? And we're probably gonna do a hip scour there too. Uh, we're gonna do a hip slide to see like how the squat looks like. Um, and we're probably gonna, basically, it, we're just looking at, do they tuck, like what is their form like, what, are their, what is their anatomy and their hip sockets like? So that we have a good idea of what to do, what not to do, what's gonna be great for them. And we look at ankle mobility. So they're just passive ways that we look at things, right? From there, we're gonna do active things. We're gonna do a squat, squat clearing test. And the first one is just gonna be here, right? We're gonna clear that squat and see what, where they can go to, what restrictions they have once we actually add gravity, right? Uh, so we go from body weight to prisoner squat to overhead squat with a PVC pipe, uh, think FMS. From there, we're gonna do push-ups and just look at global core stability, not just upper body strength, but just how does the core respond? Does it lag, is it weak? You know, can and we, we do certain different positions uh, and levels to see where they're at? From there we go seated T-spine rotations. Once again, once they're seated, once there's gravity, like what can we, how can we rotate the spine? You know, does one side rotate less than the other side? Those are all things we gotta know. Shoulder circles, so think 
FRC, we're going to look at the range of motion against the wall of a shoulder and see what's going on there. And we do standing and seated wall slides and overhead flexion, so we really want to find out right, the function of the shoulder and should this person be pressing overhead. And I'm going to tell you this right now, there's a lot of, uh, I said, people that cannot press overhead, they can't safely go overhead you know, uh, with no body weight, let alone a barbell, uh, dumbbell, anything else. So, you know, adding things like snatches, push presses, jerks, kipping, like any of that was just out of the question because it's going to destroy the joint uh, over time for sure. So we're looking at those things. We're looking at the hinge, right? What is the hinge like? What's going on here, right? Do we have a mobility issue, a stability issue? Is there core, core not firing correctly? Uh, or is there actual mobility restriction that we need to work on? 90-90 uh, static lunge, lunge with the overhead reach. So those are just active things that we do individually. In our group orientation, so now remember, like when we do our group orientation, we can't necessarily go as deep, but we spend a lot of time, our group orientations are anywhere from an hour 15 to an hour and a half, and we end up doing a lot of the active tests with our, with our members, with our clients, and a couple of other systems, right? So here we also go over our system, we touch on, on, on nutrition principles, we also do sideline windmills, TRX rolls, kettlebell goblet squats, kettlebell deadlifts. So we do these basic movement patterns and we teach all about progressions and regressions and what some people, and also lateralizations, which is just another subject in itself. But essentially, how can people still train even though if they have any type of restriction? And we teach a lot of that, both individually and as a group. Now, some of the other things that we, you know, depending on the client and their goal, you know, some of the things here also fall in line if we're working with athletes. What are we, what else are we gonna find out in our assessment, in our strategy sessions, right? We wanna find, like, we're, essentially what we're doing is finding the point A in the GPS system to take somebody to point B, which is their goal, right? And so here are some other things that we really look at, and some of them already get answered in the client intake form. A lot of it is just curiosity, right? It's just client-centric coaching, like asking a lot of questions, really caring and really digging deep into you know, people's lives and understanding better, like really understanding what they're going through, you know, what their obstacles, struggles, fear, dream, desires are, and finding out these things. So training age, you know, how long have they been training? And how frequently and how hard? Sporting age, if they're an athlete, you know, a kid, like, hey, I've been playing basketball for a year, maybe it's 10 or eight, or, you know, maybe it's a pro and you've been playing for 16 years. So we understand all these things. Injury history. Resting HR, so heart rate and HRV, which is a heart rate variability, which we do a lot of, uh, I will say, digging into. And I love, like, a good friend of mine, Joel Jamison, one of the best in the world. Uh, i say one of the best. We'll probably get mad at the best in the world when it comes to conditioning. You know, Morpheus technology, we're, we're using that to find out, you know, how to, HRV has been connected to being the number one predictor of longevity and also just health. So we're looking at that. What's the resting heart rate? What's the HRV? breathing mechanism is somebody really breathing well are they if breathing through a diaphragm or are they stressed out chest breathers right I mean it's something we also work on in our assessments and we work on it within our training sessions whether group or individual but we're trying to find that out nutrition three-day dietary record or longer we're trying to take a snapshot of what's going on in their lives when it comes to nutrition from there lifestyle stress and sleep and that also that's all in the client intake form finding out about the days, finding out about what's going on in their lives. Very, very, very important. Environments, what are the environments they're in? Work, home, uh, you know, hobbies, and how are those influencing the different decisions they're being made? Uh, this is a bait and laxity screen. So some people may look like they got great mobility, but hey, if they're hypermobile, so imagine that my elbow right now is looking this way, where I could bend my thumb all the way back here, bend my finger all the way back here, touch the ground with both palms, you know, hyperextend the knees, that usually means they're hypermobile, and that test, we, we, we score it on a test. It's very, very important, right, because somebody comes in, we get a lot of people, and, and most people actually don't know that they have this congenital laxity hypermobility, which means they have to be trained a different way. There's, a, <laughs> there's different parameters, like flexibility training for somebody like that, you, you want to probably stay away from that. <laughs> it's highly, highly recommended. You might be doing more damage than good. So, certain important things here. We look at relative strength. We look at general athletic movements. We look at rep maxes. Maybe, if, like I said, for some people looking for general health, this may not come into play as much. We look at general mobility, flow, flow and soft tissue work. Uh, we look at durability, capacity. So
So we'll do different energy system tests. Now remember, this is dependent on what the goal and what the client wants. Like that's really important. But we want to find out as much as possible. Okay. So this is kind of like the larger frame of all the things that we're looking at to then find those different, the different path that may take each individual from point A to point B, whatever their point B is, whatever their Everest is, right? I always like to think of like we're, we're the Sherpas and we're taking people to their own Everest. Now, from there, like, I'm gonna move into this, the R7 method. Now, you know, I did not create the R7 method. Uh, Mike Robertson from IFAST and, uh, and Bill Hartman, both good friends of mine, very, very, very smart guys, some of the best guys in the industry. Uh, well, we kind of took that many years ago and started kind of plugging in the different things that we do. And so the R7 method just talks about what are these different things that every training session, especially if it's individualized or a small group training session, that we're going to plug into here. Okay? So these are all important. And I'm going to go through this R7 and I'm going to show you guys how we plug it into every single thing that we do. Right? Because it's that important. We're, it's, we're looking at like... We're looking at every program kind of through, our, through the shades of R7. So number one, R1 is release, right? And remember, it's R because it's really easy to remember. So you guys will see that this is, this is easy to start remembering. But R1 is release, soft tissue work, soft, you know, self-massage tools, things like body tempering, the geisha, lacrosse balls, foam rollers, boom sticks. I mean, we could go on and on and on. Obviously, and this is going to be within a training session. So sure, yes, you have soft tissue work with massage therapists and, and dry needling and grass and ART and all that stuff, which is phenomenal and will fall more into the recovery part, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But this is for when somebody comes in, right? If they're tight and toned and wound up, like we can use these tools to create some release. Now, I'll say this, and, and this is why I said we're going to have to dig deeper into this. Um, you know, once you guys are in a certain program, I'll talk about it a little bit at the end. But you don't need as much of this as, as many people feel if you know how to do resets. And part of resets are thing like, things like breathing or uh, you know, PRI, DNS, like some other formats that we'll talk, talk about in a second. Right? But release does, like if somebody comes in and something is, is wound up and their quads are super tight, we'll do some soft tissue work, we'll do some gaiter work, we'll, we'll release the forearm, we'll release the lats, we'll, we'll work on the pec, pec minor, we'll work on the long head of the triceps to to get them out of these bad positions, right? But we'll also work on that with resets, okay? So people say like, well, what is a reset? Couple of things, okay? We're, we live in a stressed out world. We're, we're in a sympathetic world, right? If you ever wanna find out more about that, read Why Zebras Don't Have Ulcers, right? By Sapolsky. And, and like now we're so wound up, we're chest breathers, we're constantly on. So the sympathetic, meaning if we're fight or flight all day long, right? That nervous system affects our mobility okay so if we can restore that if we can restore movement and mobility now we have options we have training options so if somebody's coming in and they're super wound up they're stressed out from work and we can do some breathing drills and some reset drills and they go from here to now we have better positions to train we have better positions to squat to hinge stuff that they couldn't maybe do if the nervous system was I would say holding back because it was sympathetic so it was make creating restrictions okay so it's also good for the brain and learning. If we are in fight or flight mode, our brain is not good at learning because we can't be in the prefrontal cortex, right? We're stuck in this fight or flight in our, in our lizard brain and our emotional brain, and we're just not uptaking that information the same way. So, hey, wouldn't it be great that your training session, you actually get better because you're learning faster? Absolutely. And essentially what we end up doing is we turn on specific muscles that are dormant or kind of like sleepy. I know that's a not the greatest ex explanation of it, but we turn off specific muscles that are too turned on, right? And now what it gives us is improves joint position. So think about it, turned on, right? Peg, pick minor, lap, put my shoulder in a bad position. Hey, when we can turn these off and activate those muscles in the back and get ourselves in a better position, so anatomically our joints in a better position, guess what? Improves mobility improves performance because now I'm in a better position to, to do anything whether it's athletic whether it's lifting it's not going to beat up my joints it's going to hit the muscles it's going to give us what we want all right so from there from these resets and there's a, a bunch of different methods that we use like all types of different me methods here that we won't even dig into but you know everything from PRI DNS you know this core activation series different breathing patterns all types of stuff like that are tools in a toolbox from there we go to readiness now Readiness is essentially for many people would say dynamic warm-ups, right? We want to do three things. 
the physio physiological piece. We just want to get you warmed up and loose. We want to get the core temperature of the body up and get it ready to train. We have a bi biomechanical piece, getting moving the way we want. So this is kind of like the mobility part, right? We want to make sure that if I'm doing thoracic rotations, I'm moving the way that I want. If I'm doing hip mobility drills, I can get into a good position with a neutral spine or a lunge, right? Like I want to get here with my hips aligned with core on, right? I want to get into good positions so that I'm not beating myself up, but I'm actually getting better, okay? And number three is a specific piece, I don't know. So preparing for whatever we're gonna do, if it's gonna be sprints, throws, jumps, squatting, benching, deadlifting, we're gonna specifically get that warmed up. Now, there's a couple of things. Alan Cosgrove called this the ramp, right? Range of motion, activation, movement preparation. And so this is kind of like our mobility series. And you, every class we start with this, every training session, will have a coach guide you through this. So this is where we coach no matter what. The first two sometimes we'll teach people to do them by themselves, but readiness, we're coaching it, right? And there's a couple of rules. We go from ground to standing, right? So we start slow, we go from ground to standing, slow to fast. You don't just go into readiness and go, like, all right guys, we're gonna do sprints to get warmed up, no, right? We go from general to specific, and we go from single joint to multi-joint. So I mean, if I was wanting to work the wrist, I'll go from single joint to then maybe I'll go to multi-joint and on the floor and ground based and a lot of different stuff like that, okay? So very, very important part of this, readiness. From here, we're gonna go to reactive. So that's explosive, powerful movements, right? Speed and agility, elasticity, throwing med balls, creating power work, multi-directional stuff, power explosive exercises, Olympic lifts, right? Because now our body's primed to do the most explosive, the fastest stuff. Now, depending on what we want, right? There's a curve, a force velocity curve. So it goes from maximum strength, so that's like pure powerless, right, to strength, speed, power, speed, strength, and then absolute speed. So that's everything from Olympic lifts, resisted sprints, med ball throws, plyo jumps, box jumps. All now, this all depends on the client's goal. Like even with our general population, we want to do some speed and agility and reactivity, even with our clients that are 50, 60 years old, because guess what? One out of three people that fall break their hip. So imagine if I'm falling right now, what do I need to do that? I need power, I need agility, I need explosiveness. And it's the first thing that we lose as we get older. It's not strength, it's actually power. So this is important for everybody and it helps with athletic goals. It helps with, uh, I would say, fat loss goals, which we can't dig too much into like how, but it does, okay? So this is a part of a complete program. And hey, sometimes, like we've had seven-year-old clients where we're throwing, I would say, the deck of cards at them because they fly weird and they're just grabbing them. Pop, pop right, it's hand-eye coordination. And what, that's like, that's reactive work. We're just doing jump rope for somebody. We're just doing some pogo jumps, right? For everybody, it's gonna be different based on the goal, based on training age, sporting age, injury history, right? We're looking back at all that assessment stuff. Number five, this is our, kind of like our big rocks, right? This is our resilience. So that's building strength, increasing muscle, you know, keeping bones strong and healthy, and obviously this helps tremendously with fat loss and just general well-being. So this is our strength training, period, right? And while we've dug into this a lot, I'm just gonna kinda go like, hey, cause th this could be like a month long seminar in and of itself, but here we're covering basic movement patterns. Horizontal push, horizontal pull, vertical push, vertical pull, quad dominant, so we got static lunges, step, lunge, split, uh, hip dominant, we got rotation, anti-rotation, carry, drag, push, and then grip strength. Right, so that's kind of going to be in every program, whether it's large group, team-based, or if it's small group or, or individualized, right? So now the thing is, let me just touch on this real quick because there's, there's a, a hierarchy of fat loss pyramid that uh, Alan Cosgrove mentioned a while back. And it's like when people say, hey, look, if I want to lose body fat, but I only have X, Y, Z amount of time, like what's the hierarchy? What are the most important things? Well, check this out. I did this little pyramid right here, okay? At the bottom, is nutrition. Matter of fact, I'd probably draw another line of it. It's like nutrition, nutrition, right? It's, it's that important. From there, and that's basically, hey, if you got no time for training, you start with nutrition, right? Most beneficial. Number two, resistance training or metabolic resistance training, which is essentially what our groups are, right? And what our small groups and selling practice, right? Everything has this, resilience, strength training. It's that important. If you only got one to three hours a week, you do nutrition and you do strength training. And obviously, like whether it's strength or metabolic resistance training. If you got three to five hours, you add another thing and you go to high intensity anaerobic training. So think intervals, 
right? 20, 30 seconds off, 30, 45 seconds off. That type of stuff. Obviously, there's a lot more intervals and a lot more stuff to do that. If you got five to six hours, then you add high intensity aerobic intervals. So anaerobic, aerobic, okay? From there, you add high, uh, steady state, high intensity, and then low steady. So like, think about this. Right at the top of the pyramid, only if you have eight plus hours is where you'd add, I would say, steady state to actually like lose fat. Now, I'm gonna give you a little, a little hint. We use this for recovery. I'm gonna talk about that in a second. But think, most beneficial, least beneficial. No time, eight hours. So most of our clients have about four to five hours per week that they're like, hey, I can commit to this like for life, not just for like 12 weeks. Like this is part of my life now. And they're in amazing shape. And I'll show you guys the 212 method and what I talk, what, what I mean by that in a second. Okay, so this is that pyramid. You might see it pop up on the screen or not. I don't know. But <laughs> from there, we go to resilience. Resilience is our cardio. That's our energy system training. And there's different energy systems, right? There's anaerobic, elactic, and that's like up to 10 seconds of work. Think sprints, right? Sprint fast for 10 seconds, rest for 50 seconds, right? Most people don't do that, but it's very, very important. In sport and in the general uh, population. Anaerobic lactic is anywhere from 60 to 90 seconds of work. I don't know, think uh, 800 meter run, meter sprint. And then we have aerobic, which is over one to two minutes. So we have different energy system and there's tons of different methods of what to develop. As far as this is probably one of the, I would say, the, the, the biggest issues is that most people just do cardio, right? They're just like, I'm just doing cardio. There's no programming, there's no science behind it. Uh, and most people don't know how to tr structure cardio programs for the, for the result that they want, even knowing what results do they want. So we actually do tests, right? We find out, once again, energy system test. We, we see what a person wants, and then we look at what's missing, and then we plug that in so that they keep getting better at it. So they're achieving this result rather than like, oh, I just did some cardio at the end. Well, what did you do? What was your heart rate at? How did you recover? What were you even shooting for? Where should you be, right? Like it's, there's, there's a lot of stuff. And that's what we make that simple for our clients by really giving them systems and giving them <laughs> the exact thing they, sh they should be doing. So, and, and understanding it, like being educated on it, right? Because now they, they're, they're, there is this, uh, I would say, education and empowerment of understanding what to do. So this is a big one. And like I said, I, hey, check out BioForce. Check out 8weeksout.com for my friend Joel Jamison, number one conditioning surgeon in the world. Uh, man, a guy, seriously, best thing out there. And, and like I said, we've studied all of this stuff to put it together into the system. And last but not least right now is the homework. Uh, sorry, so it's, it's recovery, right? So as soon as we, and I say homework there too because the recovery, we give a lot of homework. Because a lot of things that you can do by yourself and should be doing by yourself to get the most out of it. So. Think of it this way, as soon as somebody's done with training, just sending them out the door like all hyped up, not the best way to go about it. We wanna get them to recover as fast as possible because our body adapts when we recover. So at the end of training sessions, you guys may have seen some videos of, on my IG stories. Hey, we're turning on the lights, putting on some cool music and people are doing breathing drills for three to five minutes. <sighs> Full exhalation. And it might look woo woo, but this is science, right? We get the system from sympathetic fight or flight the parasympathetic to rest and digest so that the heart rate comes down, the body starts recovering as soon as possible. And from there, like there's all these amazing tools for recovery, right? From hot cold therapy, breathing, like I just mentioned, general preparation work capacity. So this is where we work, we use these different energy systems for recovery, like people going for walks, uh, low steady state aerobic power work. You know, like I said, this, you can go deep on this. And from there we have obviously nutrition, movement, soft tissue work, sleep, which is so big and we, we have our clients work on tracking their sleep and seeing where we're at. Right, so this is our, our seven method and it fits in into pretty much everything that we do. And in a second, I'll flip over the chart and you guys will see how we put it into different programs. Because look, with large groups, we can't do as much or as quality or as individualized stuff as we can with pri private training, which obviously makes sense. But still, I believe that our system is, I mean, it is foolproof as far as like t touching on all these points and getting every client, every one of these things because they're that important. It's not one of, this is not like a, oh, well, like I only want to achieve weight loss, so none of these are important. No, like these are all important for no matter what goal it is. That's, that's the framework, okay? And then from there at the end, what we do is like we're always doing these three, okay? We identify goals. So if you got a goal in finances, I want, you're making this, I want to make this. We identify that. You're here, you want to go here, right? So identify that goal. Then we assess the needs. Okay, what needs to change? What needs to happen, okay? 
And you'll see there's four different kind of main things that we, we kind of look at. And those are movement, which is our training, right? But we, we put it under movement. So movement would be training, fitness, nutrition, mindset, and recovery. And like mindset is massively important because, hey, if you don't believe you can do some things or your perspective around something, self-limiting beliefs, it can affect everything else, right? So we look at all those different things. And so we identify the goals, we assess the needs in those four areas, and then we coach the difference and we coach the difference. And like coaching, that's what we do, right? Basic, what is a coach? Coach gets you from one place, to, from where you are to where you wanna be. That's the little definition of coach, right? Coaching, guidance, support, sometimes challenging you, sometimes pushing you, sometimes pulling you, but most of the time guiding you to a sustainable goal, sustainable transformation, one that sticks, okay? So that's the system, and, and once again, like we could dive down to, you know, Here's, here's, here's the, I would say, the matrix. <laughs> Blue pill, red pill, which one we wanna go down, down under. But we simplify all of this for, for our clients. It's like a simple education and then coaching the crap out of this so that our people get results. And I'm gonna flip this over in one second and you guys will kinda of see this in the system uh, in a really, really kinda of small chart but in the system of how we use it inside the gym. And so, you can see this side of the board, not as much writing at all. But so, what I wanted to, to kinda of just break down is like, this is just, you know, one of the many things that we could dive deep into um, that we do. But just given a framework of, you know, when, when we're doing, like, this is very, very serious for us. What I'm saying, like, I always say we take our coaching very seriously, but we don't take ourselves seriously, right? Because we want it to be fun as well and in a great environment for everybody to be in. But that R7 model fits in in each one of these. So we have our team training, right? Our team training just kind of, kind of like, I, I hated the word boot camp. It meant all the wrong things for what we do. Team training means together everybody achieves more. Like that's the acronym for it. And I come from a background in basketball, so always meant like for me it was like the team wins together. Like we rise as one, we, you know, we win together. And so while in team training it's very difficult to plug in the full R7s, uh, so think of it this way. In our orientations, in the assessment part which we talked about, people learn how to do the soft tissue work on themselves. Uh, they biphasic stretching, so release, resets, breathing. So we teach them a lot of these things so when they come in, they can do some of those by themselves before they do team training. So that's the R1 and R2. And then we have four different modalities, like classes throughout sessions throughout the week. Training, we have four different training sessions rather than classes throughout the week that focus on different things. So our density training is still metabolic resistance based, so meaning it's still higher intensity. But we use weights and I would say exercises to create time and attention. You know, we use different rep ranges from 8 to 15 and we undulate these things and, and program them so that people keep progressing. But, so that covers our R5. So when you come to the density class, you're still getting R1, R2. We're still doing readiness. We're getting you, we're getting you warmed up. You're getting R3. And then we go into R5. And then part of it really is also resilience because conditioning. Right? Then we have intervals. That's, that's pure conditioning life. 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, 15, 45, right? Same thing, we undulate this. Then we have a warrior class that focuses, even though it's still circuit-based, there's more velocity. So there's velocity-based movements, meaning that reactive R4, right? There's sprints, there's explosive prowler pushes, right? There's foot fire, there's band-resistant stuff. And we adjust it to the client, obviously. Like, not everybody's doing the same thing, we adjust to what they can do. So we're doing that reactive. And then we have mobility, which is a, a class co completely dedicated to joint, uh, joint health, integrity, being able to control those ranges of motion, create new ranges of motion, and so, which has become really, really popular and has really helped a lot of people with improving their nagging pains and getting them in better positions, which then allows us to obviously train them better, okay? So our team training system, if you look at it throughout the week, if people are doing multiple things, we kind of cover that R7. I, not optimal, but certainly, I, I would say optimal for a large group training session. Like, I, you know, we, we plug in that whole system, you still, even if you go in here, you're getting everything. Now, a level up from that is small group personal training. We kind of cover R1 through R7. So it's a strength training template, but we customize to each individual, meaning, hey, if you can't pull a deadlift from the floor, you're not gonna, we're not gonna push you to do that. You might be doing a trap bar deadlift, might be doing a rack pull, might be doing a kettlebell deadlift off of two blocks. Right, so we, we customize it to each individual. And that goes for every lift. If you can't pass the overhead flexion test, you're not gonna be barbell pressing overhead. That's, that would be crazy on our end. That would be uneth unethical on our end. Right, so we customize this 
And this, once again, more individualization, smaller groups, more coaching, and there's a lot of strength training here. This is actually very focused on, on the R5, on the resistance part. And then the most customized is our semi private personal training. Same thing, like now there we customize everything from the dynamic warm ups to the resets to the readiness to the like soft tissue work, individualized program, as well as nutrition coaching as our whole team is precision nutrition certified. Right? So that's certainly the best. We have the most access, we have the most coaching, it's the most individualized. And, and those are, it's kind of like the levels that we work up from. Now, from here, this is what I was mentioning earlier is like, We've created a 212 method, okay? Now, I just thought this through, like everybody loves to have a number that's easy to remember. Now remember, 212 degrees is, is where I would say water turns to steam. It's that extra degree that turns everything around. And so 212, to me what that means is like two strength sessions a week, one mobility session a week, and two types of MRT like conditioning sessions a week. If that is your foundation, you could do that for life and be in incredible shape. There's four and a half hours a week with us, like four and a half hours dedicated to your health, wellness, performance. Now obviously there's other factors like your sleep and stuff, things that we help you with, nutrition, recovery, you know, stress management, and so on and so forth. Now somebody will say like, well, what about more than that, Luca? Absolutely, we have people doing more than that, like that have more advanced goals and want to push it a little bit more. There's periods of time where they want to go more. What about less than that? Less than that is fine too. Sometimes you got to back off a little bit. Maybe you're just starting and this is much. It's all custom to you, but like this is kind of our, I would say, um, our foundation of like when you get to a certain point, if you can do this, you can do that for life. And it's like if you can't dedicate four and a half hours to your health, fitness, your how you feel, how you perform, how you look, I, then you know it's one of those things where I'm like, I don't know. I mean, put it this way: what is two and a half hours is better than none, right? One hour is better than none, and that's what we preach. That's what we teach. Where it's like, start where you're at with what you've got now, right? But the 212 method is like, this is kind of like when that result, the results really kick in, right? The steam, sorry, the water turns into steam. It's that extra degree when we get it, we get it here. And so R7 fits into all of this. And like I said, this is just something that I wanted to put together to give a little bit more insight on what we do here at Vigor Ground and with, you know, without kind of really digging into the rabbit hole, each one of those subjects, because we can really, really go deep on, on all of those, especially if we look at the, you know, training, nutrition, mindset, and recovery, right? Um, and how they're all interconnected. But I did want, like, I always want to give an insight to everybody on just how we do things and, you know, that nothing is just thrown against the wall and just like, hey, let's see what happens, right? Everybody can make a person tired, not everybody can make them better. We are committed and the most dedicated to being the greatest coaches for you because guess what?